say you want to make a wind turbine. Now you could go for something like this. It's called a Savonius. It's very popular because it's stunningly easy to make. And people have been making this from, well, all kinds of things. You can make it from drums cut in half. You can make it from waste pipe. You can 3D print it. There's just so many ways it can be made. And it is really, really simple to make. And so it is immensely popular. But of course, it does have its problems. It's not terribly efficient. And one of the reasons is when the blades are full onto the wind, of course, they capture the full force of the wind, but they rotate. And when they've rotated 90 degrees, then you've got the edge facing it and you lose a lot of that power giving its push and rely on the inertia to take it round a little bit further. Now, people have tried to solve this problem by doing all kinds of things like including extra blades. But surprisingly enough, research has shown that three-bladed Savoniuses are the maximum for the improvement of efficiency by adding extra blades. And so the two-bladed version remains the standard. It's simple and it's efficient enough and it's not difficult because you don't have to add an extra blade. So adding blades doesn't have the return you would think. An extra one, yeah, sure. More than that, you're probably wasting your time. So, people have been trying to come up with ways of overcoming this drop in efficiency because of that turn and facing edge onto the wind. And people like Harmony, for instance, have been stacking them up, basically making a spiral out of them. And you see an awful lot of what are Savoniuses in a spiral shape, so they don't have that loss of inertia at a certain point because you do in the section that is still facing straight onto the wind and so how do you solve a problem like that? Then it struck me how about instead of putting them on top of each other as stages like that we put them side by side then when the wind blows and they rotate they would have the same effect if that, that stage loss. Now, of course, it does introduce another problem. How do we get the power out? Of course, we could stick a generator at the bottom of each one, but we also need to lock them together so there's a slight mismatch. They don't bash into each other. We do that with the gear, maybe, something like that. Or we could try to combine the rotors into a single output so we get a mechanical combination of the torque of the two rotors to be delivered to the generator. And of course, the question then is, how do we do that? Well, think about a car differential. Now, the job of a car differential is to take the power from the engine, turn it 90 degrees and split it into two so you can drive each drive wheel. And of course, it can be reversed. If you drive each drive wheel, it will combine those onto a single axle. It seems like a great answer, but a simple open differential has another issue. It's called slip. If one wheel is stuck and the other one is free, like in a pool of water or an ice, and you rev that engine, the free wheel is going to spin like crazy and there'll be no drive on the stuck wheel. So if we tried to put that directly into that wind turbine, we'd have the same problem. However, there's more than one way to skin a cat and there's more than one way to create a differential. So think about a planetary gear system. A planetary gear system comprises a ring gear, a sun gear, some planet gears, and a gear carrier. And you find them all over the place. They're particularly popular in hand drills because they're great speed and torque converters. Now, traditionally, what you do is fix one and allow the other two to rotate. In a drill, it's the ring gear that's fixed, and the sun and planet gears are allowed to rotate. And that's the way they're generally used. However, if we allow all three to be rotatable, what we've in fact done is create a differential. Now we built this in video 2197 and I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video for anybody who's actually interested in it and I've made a couple of modifications to it. The modifications are pretty simple because this section is just a sun and planet gear system where the ring gear is now drivable because the outside is a great big cog and I've put another cog right next to it. I've also put these little arrows on so you can see how it's spinning and on the back we've got a couple of turn handles so that we can have a look at how this actually works but that's the gear system that we're talking about and something really interesting happened
So if I hold this one still by holding onto the handle, turn this one, then we'll see it operating in the same way that a drill does. That's not turning, and that's turning through the sun and planet system. Now if I turn them both in the same direction, clockwise or anti-clockwise, it doesn't matter. Watch this. The output here stops. That's because the output is the difference between the rate at which these two change. Now if I turn them in opposite directions, what you should see here is the output increases and that's because it's now the sum of the two inputs add together to give you an increased output. Okay, I thought that was cool, but what have we actually done? Well, we've created a differential. We've created a differential where we can put two mechanical inputs, so we could stick our Savonias attached to this and this, and as the wind blows them round, of course, what they'll then do is add that mechanical input, so we get a single mechanical output that we can then connect to our generator. Now, it should be without slip, but there are, of course, lots of ways of approaching this. Like any mechanical problem, there are always many solutions. And we could, for example, use a cycloid drive. A cycloid drive is that weird wobbly disc that is used a lot in robotics, but could also be used to create a differential. So there's lots of ways of approaching it. I quite enjoyed this as a uh, problem, but of course there are other things still to do before it's an actual solution. This is a prototype to demonstrate the idea. Of course, I'll put the links to the file in the description below should anybody want to print this off and play around with it and see how useful or not it might be to you. But I enjoyed doing the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.